Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to be showing you all how to set up some pretty quick and simple emulation using RetroArch on your Nintendo 3DS or 2DS system. That way you can play classic systems like Super Nintendo or even the PlayStation 1. So let's just jump straight into this. So to start things off on the PC, you can see I have six files here. These are all my ROMs that I'm going to be using today for my emulators. We have Pitfall for Atari, Karate Champ for the NES, uh, Crash Bandicoot for PlayStation 1, uh, Michael Jackson's Moonwalker for Sega, The Mask for Super Nintendo, and Pokemon Silver for Game Boy Color. So I'll be showing you how to get all these running today within RetroArch. It should be pretty simple. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to Google Chrome or whatever your internet browser is and head over to the RetroArch website. I'll leave a link in the description below. And you're just going to hit download. And then you're going to select your platform. And if you just scroll down towards the bottom, you'll see new Nintendo 3DS slash 2DS. And you can grab either the 3DS X file, which I believe this is just for launching it through the homebrew, uh, homebrew launcher. Or you can use a CIA, which will basically install it right to the main menu. And I'm going to be doing the CIA today, so I'll be showing you what's up with that. And that's honestly the only thing we're going to be downloading here today. So I'm going to right click and go to show in folder. We're going to minimize this and just get this so you guys can see. And I'm going to hit right click and extract to. Now the next thing you're going to want to do is take your SD card out of your 3DS or 2DS and put it in your PC. And once we have that up, what we're going to do is open up this RetroArch folder here. Go to the RetroArch CIA, open that up. And you're going to see you have a CIA folder and a RetroArch folder inside here. Now, if we look at our SD, we should have a CIA's folder on the root of our SD. If you don't, you might want to follow my previous video and how I set all that up. But I'm going to be opening this up, opening up the CIA file on RetroArch as well, and just tossing this right in there. Then we're going to go back on both. And we have our RetroArch folder here. We're just going to drag this onto the root of our SD and let this transfer. Okay, so now we have RetroArch. We just got to get the games on it. So we can close out of this here and we just have our SD card open. I'm going to open up the RetroArch folder. And right here, if you have a download folder, we're going to be using that. If you don't have one, just right click and create a new one. I'm going to call it downloads. And inside of here, and I'll explain this all later, but inside of here, we're going to create six new folders because I'm going to be using six emulators today. So we got one, two, Three, four, five, and six. And now we have our six ROMs. So to start things off, I'm gonna go with Pitfall, my Atari emulator, and I'm gonna throw that in the first folder. And then I'm just gonna rename it and I'll call it uh, Atari. You can name these whatever you guys like. Uh, the second one, Karate Champ, that's gonna go in folder two. Then I'm just gonna rename that. I know this is NES. Uh, now we have Crash Bandicoot, and just so you guys are aware, when you're doing PlayStation 1, you're going to have your folder, which is going to be the title name of your game, and you're going to open it, and you should have a .bin and a .q file for your game, and you're going to want that. But yeah, we're just going to toss that into folder 3, and while that's transferring, we're going to go into folder 4 with Michael Jackson's Moonwalker, and we'll rename this as well to Sega, S-E, whoop, let's see, Sega, and we'll rename folder number three as well. This is PS1, now that that's done. Oh, it's not quite done transferring. I'm gonna have to wait for that. Um, we'll do the mask for folder number five. Rename this to, it lets me, SNES. And the last one is gonna be Game Boy. So I'll just, I'm just gonna call this one G-Boy because I'm probably gonna store Game Boy Color games and Game Boy Advance games in here. Um, so just go ahead and toss that right into there. And then last thing to do would be to rename this to PS1 finally. And we should be all set. And just to recap, I'll open these real fast. In Atari, we have an Atari game, Game Boy, Game Boy game. NES NES game pretty self-explanatory so now let's just go ahead and pop the SD card out and we will head back over to the 3ds okay so the first thing that we're gonna do on the 3ds is navigate over to FBI and open that up just give this a second to load and once we're on this we're gonna quickly select our SD go into our CIA's folder 
and select RetroArch. And once we're there, we're just gonna select Install and Delete CIA. Press A. Install and Delete Selected CIA. Just press Yes. And let it do its thing for a second, and then hit OK to finish. Now that's it. All we have to do is hit the Home button. It's gonna tell us we have a new application here added to the Home menu. Just hit OK. And unwrap it. And now we can just open it up. Now it may take um, about a minute during the first time setup because I think it installs an initial core to get it running. Yep, I see it going right now. And uh, we're just gonna let this do its thing and I will see you in a second. Okay, now to get our cores. Now there were other ways we could have done this. We could have installed these through FBI as well, but I just wanted to show you guys through the application. So all we have to do is hit load core. And then from here, we have to select our systems that we were using. So starting from the top, you can see Atari 2600 here, the Stella 2014. I'm just going to hit A on that. And that's going to install the Atari core here. And what we're going to do is just go through and do this for all the systems that we're going to be using today. And then I'll just quickly do them. That way you can all see specific cores if you're looking for a specific game. And I'll leave timestamps down below. That way it's easily accessible. Okay, now that that's done, on to the next one. We're going to go to load core again. Scrolling down, the next one we see is, looks like Game Boy. So you can see with a lot of these, we have multiple options. Usually the general rule of thumb is if you try one and it's not running so hot, try it again on a different core and your game might run correctly. Uh, there is a similar issue with the Super Nintendo core, which I'll show you here in a second. So heading down to the same spot, you can see we have NES, but SNES is right beneath it and you can see SNES 9X 2002, 2005, 2010, uh, you know, it's kind of confusing which one to choose. I actually tried testing this earlier with the same game and the mask wasn't running so well on the 2010 version, so I'm going to be going with the 2002 version. And continuing on, if I scroll down, you see we have Sega Genesis Plus GX here. This is what I'm going to be using for our Sega games. Let that install. And then we'll just do the PlayStation 1. And for the last one here, just to show you where the PlayStation 1 is, if you scroll down to S, you'll see Sony PlayStation PCSX rearmed. So that's A for that. And we'll let this finish up, and then we will head over to the PlayStation 1 to be the first one that we test out. Okay, to get PlayStation 1 running, all we have to do is just go to Load Content. And if you remember before, I told you guys to put your games in your Downloads folder. It's because the Downloads folder is automatically here, and it's kind of easy access versus searching through your SD, but I will show you how to do both. So if you just open up your Downloads folder, you'll see you have all your directories for your systems here. I'm just going to select PS1, select Crash Bandicoot, and you can open either the .bin or the .q. And it may ask you to select your core again. If it does, just go to Sony PlayStation. And we're going to let this boot up. All right. And I don't know if you guys can hear that. I'm trying to see if I can pick up some of the volume there. But it seems like it's running okay. There's slight frame skips. Let's just go ahead and skip to the gameplay. Now, when you're doing this, you have to use the D-pad. The analog stick won't work. But everything seems to be running generally okay. You can see like when I jump here, there was a pretty massive frame rate, la loss of frame rate, I should say. And, um, but yeah, it's honestly just kind of surprising that this runs on the 3DS system because I don't even think the N64, the, I don't even think anything decent runs for that. But this is running pretty well. So, uh, yeah, I don't want to make this video too long, so I'll probably just test another emulator out real fast and then cut this video off. So let's just go ahead and do that. So all we want to do when we want to exit, actually, before we go, I want to show you guys what you have to do if you want to use a game that has multiple discs. It's actually pretty simple. You just tap the bottom screen. Once you do that up top, all you have to do is scroll down to disc control. And you'll have an option to load new disc and whatnot through there. So if you have uh, disc number two or disc number three, you'll be doing it through that. And if you press the B button, once again, so if we were going to switch, all we have to do is just hit close content, head back over to load content. And if we're navigating through our SD this time, which I'll show you, just press A on that. Scroll down to RetroArch. Scroll down to downloads. And here is the same folders from earlier because you don't have to put yours where I put mine, but that is generally how it's done. 
So next up, let's see, what should I run next? I think I will try out Atari, because I know if you do Atari on its own, not through RetroArch, it's pretty trash. So I think I'll just show some gameplay of Pitfall. All right, and you can actually see that Pitfall is running pretty good here compared to a, uh, I don't even know what to call it, the, the emulation outside of RetroArch. I've played an Atari emulator, and it was terrible. It was running, the frame rates on it were just awful. So compared to this, th this is excellent. So, uh, yeah, that, I mean, that's pretty much it. Uh, all your games are going to be loaded the same way. You're just going to select your core, select your ROM, and you should be good to go. Uh, if anybody runs into any trouble, feel free to leave a comment down below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But I will see you guys next time. Adios. Thank you.